DCs turn to ban. <sighs> Fanatics turn to ban. Ah, oh, come on. DCs <sighs> turn to ban. Fanatics turn to clockwork. DCs turn to pick. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, Focus the climb. Reserve time. <laughs> okay, Mott and I spoiled every pick yet. I spoiled you, every yeah, pick don't yesterday. Don't let me in with you. That I, was you. That was a you. Guys, issue. please. I just throw me a freaking bone I'm here. Sorry, All right. I, I, I threw you under the bus. That's true, actually. He's not here to defend himself either, so let's just throw Shannon under the bus. Yeah, I like it. I'm totally in for that. Shadow Fiend. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. DC's turn to ban. Oh, and here we were talking about this and, and we've talked about it, I believe with Brax, with Andy, and now Shane, we can ask you about it. How do you feel about the Shadow Fiend clockwork? The of course the uh the cogs deny still giving Shadow Fiend those necromastery stacks. Ten it kind of feels in my opinion, it feels a little like a dated um I don't know, bug or glitch or whatever you want to call it, but Five how do you feel about it? Remaining. Reserve time. Very true. Yeah. Fanatics turn to ban. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. DCs turn to ban. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, it feels like a lot of teams have prioritized just the vision game from heroes like Night Stalker, picking up the agonims and it just it changes the state of the game once you get that item and it allows you to five man, you can pick up a gem, you get so much map control and yeah. it, it's just a hard thing to, to combat. I mean, you're right. I mean, like, it's not, you're not, you can't like, you can still win against an Agadim's Night Stalker, but it gets so much harder, I feel like, just to move around the map even and try to, you know, get, get okay. ganks going. Right. That is true. Yep. Yep. Good Fanatics point. turn to ban. I would hope so. I hope that's the case. Cool. All right. So uh, we will see Fnatic banning out the Earthshaker that DC played Ten yesterday for Forev in the offlane, and he did extraordinarily well with it. Of course, we already talked, talked about the Meepo ban, the Ember Spirit is banned. Uh, as well for Abed. The last ban is going to be that Razor, which of course Mason played yesterday, but DC will go in a different direction and they will pick up the Queen of Pain. Okay. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Right. Reserve time. Yeah. I'm into I'm into Quap now, man. I, I really like having Quaps in games. Quap and Puck are back, in my opinion. I think they're very strong this patch, and I'm really happy about that, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. That's Earth Spirit DC's turn to pick. Mm. Ten seconds remaining. Mm. 
Five All right. seconds remaining. So we've got our, our roaming support or spirit probably Weaver. going to be the off lane clockwork. Digital Chaos will pick up the Weaver uh, more than likely in that pick. safe lane as they already have the Night Stalker Rubik as their support duo. And then Quap mid, of course. So we're waiting to see Brev's off lane hero potentially with their last pick. And then, of course, Fnatic. They got to grab their safe laner as well as their fifth position support. All right. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. I just feel like DC has a very mobile lineup, right? Once Rubik gets a blink dagger, he's somebody who can sit in the back lines blinking. Queen of Pain, Weaver, both very mobile. Nighttime, I mean, Night Stalker, very fast, hard to get a hold of. Just a hard team to lock down. You know, I feel like Fnatic now needs some sort of just hard stun. You've got Cogs, and that's a good start, but you need something to... Like a, a good silence might go a long way here. They okay. have geomagnetic grip at least, which is one good I mean, thing for that, That's something, right? Yeah. That's, no, I'm with you, though. It, it's you. a step. And now the Abaddon, there's a lot of merits here. Abaddon great against Night Stalker. You know, cleanses off the silence and the slows. Gets rid of the dagger from Queen of Pain. But I worry, I worry about the lack of lockdown here, boys. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, D DC's team fight isn't really good. That's the thing. The the reason it, it seems menacing in the sense that their heroes are very hard to deal with. They're all very mobile, but that is their strength. Is they can't they they can they can split push and they can go for these small skirmishes. But like Shane said, in the in the five versus five, I would actually favor Fnatic currently. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. I'm into it. All right. Last band's coming out here. They're still waiting. I, I agree with that statement, assuming Fnatic can get the initiations. That, that's really the key thing, right? Looking at this lineup, there, there is a lot of pressure on this clockwork Fnatic's to make those rotations early. Once back. he gets his level 6, find some hook shots and keep the, keep the game high tempo. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah. Do you think Sven could be here? Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. Fanatics turn to pick. Yep. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Enigma final ban oh, from Fnatic. <laughs> oh, they go for it again. DC's wow. My pick. God. Yeah. All right, but here's the thing. There is a Shadowfiend already on their team, so it's not going to be the mid Bloodseeker, assumedly for uh, Fnatic this time, I would imagine. You want that Shadowfiend mid. Uh, they might play it in the safe lane. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, that's kind of gross. Five seconds remaining. I mean, it's pretty good, guys, but they literally, like, Earth Spirit and Clockwork are Reserved. all of their control outside of Bloodseeker Ultimate. It is a form of control, but... Hmm. Yeah. Well, sh she can blink. Oh. That's true. Well, that, that's a fair point. I think I like the Tide Hunter last pick. Mm -hmm. 
10 feet around. All right, well, best of three here, folks. Again, this is elimination. We're in the single limb part of the bracket. Uh, we need some predictions. Shane, what do you think? Who's taking game one here, buddy? All right, Andy, we'll hear plenty more of your thoughts throughout the game, but uh, initial gut reaction, who's taking it? I believe in the QO Bloodseeker. He made me believe yesterday. All right, I'm actually going to be in the Shane camp. I uh, will go DC as well. I think their team fight's going to be just a little too much. But time will tell. You're absolutely right. The QO Bloodseeker yesterday was very impressive. It turned some heads, and it absolutely uh, shut down that sniper in the 1v1 mid lane matchup that we saw. So exciting stuff that lies ahead. This is just our first series today. We'll have our second heat coming uh, right after this, it is IGV versus Danish Bears, uh, the second quarterfinal matchup. We've already got Newbie and NP seeded forward in the bracket. So lots to look forward to on day three of the Zotac Cup Masters. We'll load into game one, and we're going to hand it off uh, to Annie and Draskel to cast here for game number one. All right. Thank you very much, Zayori. Draskel, you got to take a look at the draft as it was unfolding. Biggest surprise pick, biggest one you want to keep your eyes on here. Well, it's definitely the Bloodseeker. I mean, Fnatic ran this yesterday. I don't know if they won the game because of the Bloodseeker, but QO made it look a lot better than my my initial thoughts, I suppose you could say. I just like the way that it works with the lineup. You get this really strong form of initiation with the hookshot, and then you follow it up with either, you know, a rupture, a blood rape, something like that. You can kill these heroes on DC that are quite mobile still. Yeah, I mean, DC, it seems like they just want to be hunting. They want to be skirting around these fights. They don't want to take those big five-on-five -five engages. I mean, they've got some serious damage if they can isolate one target, but how does Fnatic play against that? If Fnatic really just want to play the five-man Dota around the Shadow Fiend, I think, and around the Bloodseeker during the mid-game. They swap out the Clockwork to his support position, so he'll be able to... He can do his job, really, without that many items. That's kind of the beauty of the Clock with these heroes. It makes the Earth Spirit combo very easy to land. He's good at area control and area denial, which is like the main strength of Bloodseeker as well. So like you mentioned, DC, they want to run around, they want these skirmishes. But if you rupture somebody, you're fighting there or that person's dead. So it's kind of like forcing the engagement in a very, very hard way. So we'll see how it works out. Yep. Already some uh, decent vision plop down, just making sure that there's no easy dip out into the jungle for any dire mid heroes. and. Another Radiant War just keeping track of the Shrine, and they will see Mason moving up here. Maybe looking for a sneaky steal. Has that Scushi leveled up? We'll see if he goes for it. Looks like uh, Radiant, he'll just give this one up. They see what's going down, and they don't really want to fight a Night Stalker level 1, so looks like some, uh, some good wards snapped up. Still, one unclaimed here. It's just a common reaction to when you're playing against Shadowfin Clock. You know that they're going to be sitting in base, so it's very easy for you to just walk up and take the rune just due to the fact that Shadow Fiend's going to be abusing that soul. So you're you're playing two heroes up, almost, no matter what, in that situation. So yeah, DC abuse it. They just take the, the free bounty. Yep, uh, QO sticking around mid. I mean, they're going to try to make a go of it on Abed, already getting that first push with the cog. so nice, worse fe nice work, Febby. Uh, how long does the clockwork stick around here? I mean, when is it just going to be a true solo lane, or is Febby in it for the long run? I don't think he'll stick around for that long. Um, I, I don't think that Queen actually beats Bloodseeker that hard just because you have the sustain from the, the Blood Rage, but, you know, maybe level 2, level 3, then he probably just doesn't come back and then goes elsewhere. All right, down in our bottom lane, Shadow Fiend. Again, already starting out with Oodles that Anai has got himself 12 from the cog, so lots of souls rolling in for him, but really difficult to kill that Tide. Started with the Anchor Smash, so he's a little vulnerable to level 2, but once he gets that Kraken Shell, there's not much they can do solo. <laughs> Well, they won't be able to kill him per se, but he's certainly not going to impede the farm of the Shadow Fiend. That's the one thing about Tide, is you kind of want melee heroes to abuse in lane, and really kind of like throw Anchor Smash at him, mess up their CS, be a general nuisance. But against a hero like Shadow Fiend with this base damage, he won't be able to stop it. Yep, DJ already giving him a run for his money, just trying to keep things moving. And we talked about uh, Earth Spirit being a fantastic ganker for mid lane. You really only need the Earth Spirit and not your secondary support. Um, about what timing is that going to make an appearance here? When should Abed get scared? I don't think that they really need to kill the Queen in this matchup, funnily enough. I mean, a lot of the time you look at it and you say, yeah, you know, we can kill this Queen, but is doing more than okay. He doesn't really need any outside assistance, so whatever DJ decides, and if it's just keeping this Tide low bottom, 
You know, we can see 4F kind of walking it off right now, but yeah. If they just keep him low, the Bloodseeker's gonna crush his lane. Yeah, Bloodseeker already feeling dominant. 12 last hits to the Queen of Pain's 5, so... Yeah, you talked about this not being a super, super Queen-favored matchup, but... How far can she afford to lose the lane? Like, when is the point of Queen of Pain starts really struggling and needs help from her supports right away? The scary thing is, even if he gets help, there's a chance that they won't kill him. Just because of how much he gains through having that thirst. Like, you can see how aggressive Q is playing this. He's just walking up and hitting people. He knows that if one hero on his side lane is low health, he's not going to lose his lane. 16 to 9 to 6 to 4. That is a huge discrepancy at two and a half minutes. Yep, starting to see it in terms of levels. Quap only three and a half, and Bloodseeker is going to hit four here, so just getting that leg up here. It is scary for Queen of Pain. How does a Quap play from behind? I mean, how do you not just get totally crippled into the mid game? You got to TP around and look for fights, or like you mentioned earlier, you're, somebody has to rotate for you. So as soon as you hit six is when you want to start trying to contribute with the Sonic Wave. You know, you TP around the map, you hope you get a kill to get yourself back in, because right now, it's not even really a skill-based thing. It's just that you can't win this matchup anymore. You are looking at a Bloodseeker farm creeps and you're going, well, I got a Rubik support, and <laughs> that's about it. That's He's an appetizer, help. man. Bloodseeker gets lifted back, but you can see Aved just can't even stick around in lane. The threat of the Ravage getting ever closer as Bloodseeker's going to pick up his five soon. Now, once he gets Rupture, He's obviously going to hit 6 before Abed at this point because he's gotten so many denies, like 11 to, to 5. When he hits 6, Abed has to have a TP in his inventory or he's just going to get dope. And that's something that he's going to have to be very cautious of because, as you mentioned, there's only like 2 or 3 creeps away from level 5 for Q. But yeah, lane's, um, I guess more specifically middle, going very, very well for Fnatic. And if you look at Forev, he is also getting almost nothing out of this. So by keeping DJ bottom, he's prevented <laughs> the Tidehunter from pulling ever. Like, Forev's not been able to get anything really outside of the, the creep EXP. And, you know, he's trying to contest, but again, Shadow King hits so hard. It's for 94 damage at three minutes in. Yep, some body blocks coming in. I mean, some damage will be done to Tide here, but definitely can't finish it out. But yeah, like you mentioned, Bloodseeker, farming like a champ, Shadow Fiend completely unchecked. Up here in the top lane, Clockwork's just been having a fun time using cogs to burn some mana keep people under control. I mean, Fnatic, they are doing very well in their laning phase. What's going right for DC right now? Hard to say, really. I mean, I guess the Reaver's <laughs> getting farm, Mason's getting items. That's that's definitely what they want. He's the one who I think is going to be the most difficult to deal with. So if he gets the start that he needs, then I think that DC are still going to be okay. Mm -hmm. They might find DJ, DJ? Yeah, in some trouble. Looks like he's probably going to end up burning down. One more right click should do him. Taken down to the Shadow Strike, and Abed does score first blood. He has to leave lane for it though. Now Febby just going to be TPing out of a sticky situation. The first nighttime and a double damage Night Stalker on his ass, but they can't actually lock down the kill. So QO just going to play safe under tower. Still really looking for that level six. He's so close. Can't step out too far here. Looks like Bulba doesn't want to back off at all. They bring DJ back to mid and it looks like Bulba's not going to jump on this Bloodseeker just yet. They're trying to get Abed back into the lane. It's really, really hard though. Abed's not even level 5 and Kua's gonna hit 6. This is gonna be very problematic. I don't know really what they can do in regards to mid, but they are wrapping around towards bottom, so we'll see if they can kill Aja perhaps. Oh no, they're just yeah. gonna turn back. They are gonna turn out. Rupture gonna be picked up on Bloodseeker and one more creep. Gotta keep an eye on him, just busting that out. But for right now, it looks like DJ might get the unlucky end of the stick again, but we'll make it back to our shrine of Febby. Only level one. This clockwork has just been on the move consistently. Great use of the cogs there, but a couple more levels sure would help out his damage. And now Bloodseeker sprinting around. He's hungry. He's got that thirst passive rocking out. Looks like Dubu may end up just ticking down the old natural way. One more hit. And it will go to Febby. So nice experience. Nice gold rocking out to that clockwork now. It's a really tough situation for DC. Their support pairing is very unorthodox, so like Maybe having the, the one hero that runs at stuff with the Rubik is common, but Night Stalker can really only run at you half the time because he needs Knight. He needs his Hunter and the Knight passive to really feel like he's a, a menace, whereas other heroes like Tree, for example, they're off the map all the time, they can harass, they're just a nuisance, whereas Night Stalker with no levels is not really that scary, so DC need a lot of time, whereas Fnatic are thriving in the laning phase. They don't need any like specific timing. That's why it's okay for Bibby to be solo level at this stage because he secured that his safe lane and his middle lane were going to win. So being a little bit under leveled is more than okay with him right now. 
Yeah, he's definitely feeling okay so far, and our Bloodseeker has ticked over to that six, so... Yeah, like you mentioned, Fnatic are comfortable. DC definitely need time. It's going to be a while before that Mason Weaver starts to feel really scary. And, I mean, can Fnatic hold out deep into the late game? Can they take this late against a farmed Weaver? Uh, it's, it's a little bit tricky. It kind of depends, I think, on what the other heroes have. Oh, man. Or uh, he's getting dope big time. <laughs> yeah. There's going to be a TP in from the Rubik, but that's mostly moral support here is Bevy. Yep, that's, uh, that's not it. Bulba going in. They will be able to lock down Ajit. This could be a big kill in the Shadow Fiend if they can find it. They lift him up, commit the Sonic Wave for it, and that will be a kill. A roll in reinitiation here onto DJ, and yep, they've got it. That's going to be a double kill for Aved, so pretty good way to get this Quap back in the game. Just start funneling her kills. That was a sick blink by Aved, by the way. He blinked in front of the Earth Sphere in mid-roll to prevent him from getting away. That was an extremely nice play, getting the, the two kills instead of just the one. And that's exactly what DC need, right? They need this Queen to rotate around. They need him to find successful kills. And then he'll be, you know, good as uh, good as can be. Rupture onto Forev. I like the choice to bring the Tide into the mid to help out with his levels, but seems like he might be in a little predicament here. Double silence, and now the Quap can't blink out of this. Looks like they still want to be focusing down Forev, but Qo in a little bit of trouble here. Has that Shadow Strike on him. He needs to find a creep or something to heal up. It looks like he should live through it, but they only get the Tide. Quap's still very much alive. Yeah, it, Rupture is an interesting skill against Tide because during the mid game, if he is level 6 there, there's no way they can make that play because the Ravage and the Tower would more or less kill Qo. So I don't know how many more times we're going to be seeing stuff like that against Forev. And the fact that he he is kind of you know, halfway-ish to level 6, I guess, at 8 minutes. So it's not like he had a completely awful lane, but at the same time, you can see Fnatic moving around. They're trying to get as much pressure as they can on the lanes before they know that that Ravage is going to be on Ravage going to be that ever-present threat. Qo still farming up the storm in the mid lane. Still feeling good, switching over to Network. He's going to be top in the charts. And down bottom, our Shadow Fiend just quietly accumulating oodles of farm. I don't see Shadow Fiend run a lot in that position one role. I mean, what are his timings going to be? When does he want to start moving with his team, or does he just want to sit and farm indefinitely? Well, he's definitely going to want to move around because he's the primary, like, siege unit, if you want to call it that. He's the one who gets towers. You sit your Abaddon behind him, you cast a Photic Shield, and you just watch him kill buildings. Now, they are trying to set up a gank on him right now. He's playing a little bit passive. Yeah, he's just going to shove out the wave, make it a little bit harder for them to dive. But yeah, they I bring think... in the quap. Oh, are they going to go for this? This is pretty risky. It seems like they're into it, but Abed, settle for some creeps for now, and there's a TP out. So no Shadow Fiend kill today. Instead, the mid going to be pushed in by the Radiant. Yeah, this is what they want. They want to just move around together as a unit. They're even bringing in the Abaddon, so we're going to see that Aphotic Shield and the Blood Rage combination that we talked about during the draft. It's going to help him just mow down towers. I'm excited for it, Febby. Trying to do his best to zone here. Still a long ways off hookshot, but like you talked about, this cog can take his time. As long as he's on points with those cogs, that's going to be enough to zone back for his team. And looks like this tower is a sure thing. It's going to take their time finishing it off, and Bloodseeker snaps that one up, so... Immediate TP down, bottom lane's getting heated. They got a couple trapped in the cogs. Mason able to scoochie out, very, very low mana. Looks like they are still hunting Bulba here. They go for the rupture. He tries to TP out. He is currently silenced, but the TP completes. They just don't have the lockdown necessary without that hookshot. They kind of used all their spells right away. Like when DJ TP'd, there was already a hero on cogs, so I think it might have been just better to save the boulder smash, but I guess he just threw it out. Maybe worried that Debbie was going to die. But yeah, nice TP there from Bulba. Well, either way, they don't score up any kills here, but still bringing in the whole squad to push this tower. And you talked about Fnatic really hitting their peak right about now. They just want to be sieging as five. The Abaddon can sponge up a huge amount of damage. And ooh, silence onto the Weaver. They push oh, him back nice. with the Cogs. Mason in some serious trouble and does go down. TP in immediate ravage. They've got four. And now Night Stalker's hungry, trying to bring up the rest of the fight. There's going to be that Requiem dropped out, doing some serious damage to the Rubik. And another commit back in. Abed, that's... Sonic Wave not quite doing enough. The Radiant, they are starting to drop, but Abed's in some trouble as well. Huo chasing him down, activates that Shrine, but just gets blasted. That's going to be a very, very bloody engage. Fnatic lose too, but four heroes dead for DC, and their tower going to be going down. Yeah, the Ravage looked really nice at first, but the problem is there, the follow-up wasn't there right away. You saw that Abed wasn't in the team fight until well after the Ravage stun had already dissipated. And at that point, they lost Mason, so the fight can no longer really be taken. I, I don't know, that was a really weird defense. I didn't think that they would try to force an engagement like that, 
You know, there was no nighttime, so the Night Stalker, he doesn't even have crippling fierce skill. So he can't stop, like, a Requiem, he can't stop DJ from throwing out all his spells, it was just... That was a disaster for DC. And how unusual is this Night Stalker's build right now? He goes for the two points in Hunter in a Night because he just needs that extra little bit of nighttime presence, but the no crippling fear seems like they just are lacking lockdown. It's pretty common, um, mainly because Void is such a good mana cost to damage spell. Like, the ratio is really nice. It's 100 mana at level 3 for 255 damage. It's very, very attractive for a support hero to take that because most of the time you are lacking in the DPS department, especially. Oh, Bulbo with another TP attempt out. This time it will be successful, so Ravage down at least for the next 50 seconds, but... That's just Kyuo really dominating this lane. No one can step against the Bloodseeker now. I mean, what's the best shot for isolating him? He's just gonna be sticking with his crew. Top tower. That's the one thing that's scary. There's not really a ton of stun on DC. It's pretty much a lift and a Ravage, and that's it. But Dyer's once the... You know, Kyuo did this a lot yesterday. He doesn't care if you Dyer's TP away. Because at the end of the day, you have to TP away or you're gonna die. <laughs> So he's just making you go back to base. Very liberal. DJ buying some time for himself. Gets a really nice rock and actually lives long enough for Bloodseeker to be TPing in. His clock gets lifted up. They eat up that little bit of disable. Now Abed still hot on the heels of DJ. He's rolling away, but Quap keeps right on after him. Looks like DJ will actually live here. Now Ravage still down. They don't have the hook shot, but they are able to break the TP with the Cogs push. Abed just going to be chilling there. Does have that blink available. They're waiting for it. Febby setting up on a likely blink spot, but Abed able to juke himself out. And meanwhile, some really good push coming in. Our Shadow Fiend, who's just been quietly sitting back, accumulating farm now with a full mech up, starts laying into top tower. God, I haven't seen this since old Fnatic when Mushi was doing this. The main reason why you don't see the mech on Shadow Fiend anymore is because they increased the mana cost by a lot. I think they increased it by like 50% compared to what it used to be, so it kind of just stopped being a thing. But for this type of scenario, where all you're really looking to do is just siege non-stop, you have this great protection in Ohio's Abaddon, and you have the, the hookshot soon coming up on Febby, he's gonna hit 6 here. Like, everything is kind of falling into place for Fnatic. Yeah, it's, it's looking real good. We do have another night time here, so Bulba gonna be smoking up, looking for some prey. He did not get, uh, he was not successful on his first night time attempt, even though he had that double damage rune right when it hit, but we'll see if he can redeem himself here, just... Walking himself down to the bot lane. Ohio is a pretty tough kill, this ABBA. Already level 9. Already has that Vladimir's offering, so he is... He's no squishy. There's no way they want to go on him. Like, if they see him hitting creeps here, this is a no-go. Yeah, you can already see DC, they're out. They're like, nope, not interested in that. We're gonna mm. try to find a straggler instead. Yeah, but Fnatic, they're gonna go walk right on into DC. It looks like they do catch out, do we? That poor squishy Rubik. Probably gonna get what's coming to him. Nice roll in, does clip him off, and... Oh, they've got Febby there to lock him down with cogs if necessary. Not even needed. Now Clockwork again does have that hook shot, so they might be able to push for more here. Mason gonna be crawling around in the bushes, but pretty low mana. He's gotta watch himself here. A couple more scoochies and he won't have that time lapse. This game is getting actually extremely difficult for DC. You can see Mason's going back for the Midas now because he doesn't really have a lot of places on the map and farm openly. Fnatic are walking down lanes as five, and DC are doing the best they can to spread out, but he has to be the one who's playing like, you know, behind the line and stuff, so he needs to go for an item to allow him to gain some kind of economic advantage. Yeah, hook this there from uh, Debbie. But I mean, honestly, no it's alright. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. The tower is dead, right? It doesn't even matter that he needs to hook. This zoning hook shot right there, new meta. Now TP up to the tower, Kiwo gonna be hunting here. Abed just gonna be able to blink and TP away from that rupture, but like you mentioned, forces the TP, lane now cleared out, and Fnatic can just keep the pressure coming in. It looks like they have battle lines drawn on the map, push in mid, push in top, do not let that gas pedal up for a second, just keep going, keep wadding as five. How long can Fnatic do that? Is there a point where they're just gonna kinda hit a wall and stop being able to do any damage? Tier threes are always the test for lineups like this. So you get your last tier 2 mid, potentially, and then you you kill Roshan if DC don't contest. Or maybe you win the Roshan fight and then Radiant's get Aegis anyway, and then you see if you can reach attack. the high ground. There will come a point where DC's lineup kind of comes online, and it might be soon. Ajit in some trouble. Yep, he's gonna be TP'd upon here. Silent stuff will go down. That Death Requiem doing a little bit. We'll see if his team can follow up. Febby traps Forev in the cogs. Still does have that Ravage, but no mana now. Oh, he gets burned down. Now Forev, just a walking shell. Bulba. Still trying to get the most out of this nighttime. Charging in, there will be a silence coming out. Looks like Dubu will be able to walk out of that. 
So not finding a whole lot of targets here from Fnatic. DC playing really well in that fight, just getting in, getting a target, and getting right back out. Finding the isolated channel fiend is probably the best kill they can get. I think it's even better than killing QO, because QO is not the siege hero. He doesn't want to walk up and hit the tower. He just wants to blood rage Ajit and sit in the back and wait for a potential engage from DC. So the fact that they find the shadow fiend means the siege is halted. They're going to be able to push out a couple of lanes while waiting for him to respawn. They're even going on him again. Oh, if he dies yeah. again, this is so bad. I don't think he it's will, though. daytime, though, so Bulba, he's a little bit sluggish there. Ajit able to walk back behind the tower and... There is still four heroes banding together, could potentially kill off this Rubik, or at least shove the lane in. So, Fnatic, a little bit of a fumble there, losing that Shadow Fiend, but certainly not the loss of their momentum. They still got about a 4,000 net worth lead. You can't give away a lot of those, though, if you're Fnatic, because their team is meant to do this. They're meant to, like, barrel down every single lane and take your towers. Over time, Mason, with his finished Midas now, he's going to make his way towards that Lincolns and then a damage item. And then you're going to start wondering, okay, so how do we actually kill the Weaver and fight him? That's when things start to get hairy for Fnatic. It's just that DC's team needs more time to get core items than what Fnatic does. They can just go as early as they want. They really only need levels on a couple of heroes, and then they just hit towers. That's all they need to do. Looks like Fnatic taking this opportunity to pull a quick Roshan. And down bottom, I mean, DC know what's up. They were pressuring this tower for a long time and no one responded, so probably a likely story that Roche is being taken. And now Ajit, he's got that Aegis tanking him up even further. He's got the Dragon Lance for stats, so Shadow Fiend is, I mean, he's online. He wants to be fighting, but hopefully he'll be sticking closer with his team and not get caught out. I think they still have about like 10 or 15 more minutes if you're Fnatic before things start to get really hectic. Because by then, we're, we're talking finish Lincolns on Mason, maybe he's halfway to a damage item at that point, and assuming they, they don't lose any fights really badly for Fnatic, I'd say that's about their time frame. And then it's going to be Mason pushing lanes too fast, and Abed pushing lanes too fast, and you're going to get pulled back, and you're going to have to TP to different places, and then you're going to get picked off. And that's when DC's lineup starts to become terrifying. Yeah, I mean, what's the point of no return for Fnatic? Like, they're going to go in, they're going to try their luck at Tier 3s eventually. How much do they have to get by that 30-minute mark before it becomes really difficult for them? I'd say, like, at least one Rax to feel comfortable. Because then you have one lane pushing in idly all the time. And against a team with this much mobility, you kind of want that. You want one lane idly pushing in for you so you don't have to address it, you know, every two minutes when Mason or Abed are there. Yeah, I mean, DC, they can push lanes pretty quickly, but Super Creeps and Mega Creeps can make it difficult for them. And now Mason will get ruptured here. The hook shot for good measure. They're going to keep him silenced up, and that is a dead bug. He will fight with his last breath, but nice kill. Just checking the pace of that Weaver. He was thinking about finishing off that Lincoln Sphere, but going to be a long time coming now. That was a very nicely executed gank there from Fnatic. I mean, sure, the initiation from DJ kind of whiffed on the silence mark, but... It's kind of what we said during the draft. If you get hit by a hook shot against those heroes, they're chained silence. There's no way you can get out. Oh, now Kyo goes in. This is a solo TP. And Bulba does have that ult available. Kyo not going to get punished for now, but this tower's starting to take some damage. His team returning the favor and should be able to find this tier 2 mid. It's only held back by a Rubik. So, tower trade going in, but in the end, Fnatic, they're still executing the plan they want. They're taking over Dire's side of the map. Just gotta be careful not to lose too many structures of their own, because like you mentioned, once that Weaver comes online, there is some serious push and serious damage coming out of DC. I think even being a Rax down for DC isn't necessarily game ending either, just because of the nature of their heroes and how mobile they can be. Even though they killed Mason there, they commit three heroes, and that's all three of their highest kill potential like pickoff heroes to get one core. And then if Abed's somewhere else and, you know, you have a Tidehunter in another side lane hitting creeps. You can't really deal with all of them simultaneously. And that's kind of a, a hint of things to come if Fnatic aren't able to deal some substantial damage to the base of DC. It looks like they're going to group up and at least make a go of it. Queen of Pain still hanging out in the bottom lane. I mean, how well has this Queen of Pain recovered from what was a very, very tricky lane? I'd say he's done pretty well. He got a nice TP on bottom lane that ended up resulting in two kills. So I'd say that in of itself kind of puts you almost back in it, because realistically you're only down like when it does a dozen creeps, creeps. And then he's, for the most part, not really died. I think he died once yet. But he's 4 on 1, so he's, he's not struggling. Definitely getting himself back in it. Going for a Lincoln Sphere of his own, just trying to make Kyo have a really tough time finding those easy ruptures. Because it is such a great tool at just controlling these fights, controlling DC's slippery heroes, and now 
Silence comes in onto the Bloodseeker. He's going to get pinged out. It looks like they want to make a go of it. Silence comes in, does clip onto the Weaver. Requiem comes out, the hook shot onto Ferev, trying to burn that mana, trying to prevent a rabbit. He does get silenced, and now it looks like that Kraken Shell is not going to save him. He does make himself back up, but there we go. Abed able to go in Sonic Wave. Mason squiggling on through. They've got dust on him. If they can get this Weaver, it's huge. Well, with Q being now, dead, there's no way they can kill Weaver. They needed uh, they needed the, the rupture into like chain silence or a hookshot or something like that. They dumped everything onto Forev because they were scared of the ravage, and that allowed Abed to aggressively blink in the back and get that really really important kill on Radiance Kiro. The siege is over. That's is a that's a huge attack. victory for DC. Radiance top tower is under attack. They're still standing. They did get the tier 3, which is still something, but not as much as Fnatic wanted or maybe even needed to get out of that exchange. And now DCR is smoked bottom. They're looking for someone to go back and potentially farm this. And if it's QO, he could just die again. I see, he's going in. This is, uh, he's got to be cautious here. He's got to know something's up. He goes in and, well, they got the gush on him. They get the lift. And now it looks like that Bloodseeker can't make it out alive. Just a happy little blood right there. That's all he's going to leave behind, so... That's, uh, that's really rough. That's two deaths on the Bloodseeker in a row. And now, uh, Shadow Fiend coming to try to help out his ABBA, but... Yeah, this is DC getting some momentum back in this. Really evening out that net worth and getting those high-value kills. They're doing a really good job of avoiding having to fight into the Aegis. Like, Ajit had it for a really long time, it obviously faded a second ago. But that's what they want. They don't want to have to fight into two Shadow Fiends. Unfortunately, though, for DC, there's a 10-second BKB now on the Shadow Fiends, which is still pretty darn difficult to fight directly into, and they no longer have a tier 3 in the middle lane. Now, I don't know about pushing mid first, because it's the lane with the most shrines, but, I mean, getting the tower down opens up the opportunity to kill the out or outer tier shrines, if they can get there. But look at the lane equilibrium. It's like, every single lane is pushing in DC's favor, almost. Yeah, definitely doing a, a good job there. Now, this Weaver, I mean, potentially in some trouble, briefly got silenced, and he's just gonna scurry on through clockwork. Not going to commit the hookshot, there's just not enough damage there. Fnatic, I mean, they've got to stick together. It seems like they kind of lost track of that full five-man push wad, and they're splitting up here, letting heroes go solo, and DC thrive on those individual pickoffs. The longer they can keep the lanes pushed out like this, as you said, it's, it's just about the pickoff game, and they are extremely good at it. The Night Soccer is going to have Aghanim soon. He's only like 500 away, so that's going to make it even harder for, you know, Fnatic to get out on the map. Ohio going to be walking right into damage, but that Abaddon is nearly impossible to kill unless you've got lockdown for days. So yeah, right now, I mean... You just look at that hero and you just say, nah, <laughs> we're, we're not even going to bother. <laughs> Smoke coming in from Fnatic. It looks like they do want to get active. They want to keep that momentum up, get themselves back in it, because they have just been uh, a little bit quiet for the last couple of minutes since that awkward fight on the high ground of the mid lane. They're going to be pushing all together, like you mentioned. Brand new BKB on that Shadow Fiend down bottom. Ohio is able to get the kill on Dubu. Just a squishy Rubik. But if they can actually find the Quap on the back of this, that's going to be huge. Now Abed will get silenced up. In some trouble here, just trying to go. And Lincoln Spear popped out. They do get the Rupture off on her. Hookshot in. They are sparing no expense on this kill. They will get another silence on her. The Creep Wave's blocking the actual kill, but the Raze finishes the job. So Ajit getting himself back up. They do have to make sure that Mason doesn't find a free tower off the back of this. Lots of space created for this Weaver to be pushing in, and he's starting to get to be a problem. He's got himself 2k gold on top of his Lincoln Spear. And he's uh, given Odd Jade a run for his money now. This is the, the primary issue. You know, we spoke about it not even five minutes ago. You spend three or four heroes to kill Abed or Mason, but you can't kill them both. If they're always on the opposite side of the map, and you're sending three to four heroes to kill one, the other one will almost exclusively be able to farm with impunity. They, they, he doesn't care anymore because he knows that all the spells that can kill him were just cast. Yeah, it's, uh, it's tricky. DC definitely reading this game right and maybe sticking a thorn in Fnatic's side, so... I mean, how should Fnatic respond to that? Do they have to just stay together and just continually push and try to win this and just base pressure, or do they have to go get those high-value kills? Because now Weaver, he's tapping on the Tier 3s all alone. It's a really bad sign for Fnatic that this is happening already. Maybe happening a little bit faster than they wanted to. Uh, they're gonna be back here and make a fight. 
Yep, TP into the Shrine. Ohio trying to frontline here. Ajit is able to snap up a regen rune, at least denying it to the Dire. But Cogs goes in. They trap the Rubik. He's silenced up. It's an easy raise kill. Ohio still chasing after Ferev. There's no mana at all for that Ravage. So can they uh, keep that on lock? Abed. Get that Sonic Wave ready. Nice hook shot in. They will find the Invis Weaver. Mason going to get locked down, but just time lapsing right out. Doesn't want to deal with any of this nonsense. It's going to be God. wrapping the long way around, but they will give up the Shrine. That boulder was so close to hitting him in that cogs. If he hit, if DJ hit that kick, that was a dead weaver. That's almost a forced buyback at that point. Roshan's not up, unfortunately. He's heavy, he's checking it out. It is fortunate that Fnatic were able to force back DC. Like Mason and the, the Queen both being in the same place at the same time, that is an ideal situation. Because then if you take a fight and you get your spells coordinated properly, you know the other cores, not just pushing you know, your top lane or pushing your bottom lane. Then you can actually go for something that threatens DC's base without having to take economical or structural damage of your own. So that was a really big opportunity that unfortunately, that kick being like two units to the right could have killed the Weaver might have been a completely different game. Yeah, definitely getting tougher. I mean, we're 27 minutes in and we talked about the need to take Rax ASAP for Fnatic. I mean, are they losing too much momentum? Is this going to be a real tricky game now, or do they still got a couple of real nice fights left in them? Oh, they still got some gas left in the tank. I'd say they probably still have about 10 or so more minutes. The biggest issue is going to be when Mason gets his first damage item. You can see right now, he's building almost exclusively for his own protection. Like, he wants to just live. If they send a bunch of heroes at him, and he's able to BKB and waste their time, that means that Abed's pushing, that means that, you know, Sam is farming somewhere on the map, your Tidehunter is farming somewhere on the map. It's just economical gain that they get by, you know, Fnatic having to commit so much and maybe not even getting a kill once he has BKB. Yeah, this is uh, starting to get tough now. Fnatic, we'll see that Roche has respawned. Febby gonna scout that out, but I mean, Dyer, they know what's up. There's been ample time for ults to come back online. Everyone respawned, everyone can position around. Now, there will be a ra uh, rupture coming back in. Rubik with the stolen rupture gives it right back, but that's gonna be Kyo just sitting there taking it. Able to clean up the swarm, just has to sit tight and wait for the Ravage to end, but like you mentioned, while that's going on, so much space created for Abed down bottom, just not feeling a care in the world. And now Fnatic, they have to go defend this tier 3. Ajit forced to rotate back, and that does leave the Roche open if DC want to make a go of it. I think it's pretty tough for DC to take Roche at the moment. They don't have a lot of damage. They're still just playing the long con, right? They don't they don't really want to end the game right now. Sure, if Fnatic make a mistake, they can. But for the time being, it's just farm up the items. Oh. And then, oh that was like a max length hook shot from Febby. Does catch out Bulba. They're just getting positioning, but yeah, like you talked about in down bottom. They've got that Tide Ravage, he's got the Blink. If they wanted to just YOLO this up, Queen of Pain can follow with their Sonic Wave, but seems like they'll give him a warning for now. I guess for DC, just keeping Fnatic pushed back, not farming is uh, as, almost as good as having him dead. This is all about lane equilibrium now for both teams. It's like if DC can keep at least two lanes pushed at the same time, Fnatic are always going to be taking some kind of base damage if they go for a push down mid. Yeah, it's, it's getting tough. Huo should be able to TP out. Bulba not able to get there quick enough and cancel that mid lane. They're going to have our squishy little Rubik potentially in some trouble here. There are ample Radiant heroes around. They seem to really want to get back into this Roche pit. They need an Aegis. They need some sort of momentum to drive them high ground. This time the hook shot won't clip onto Dubu. But they make their way into the pit. It's, it's not sneaky. I mean, DC know what's up. Do they want to take a fight here or do they want to take this opportunity to push lanes? They're going to push in as long as they can. Like, I don't think Abed or... Uh, Mason's actually making his way over now. Maybe they're unsure as how fast he's going to draw. Right, it's, it's not the fastest 30 minute rush I've ever seen. There is time for Mason to make his way forward. They've got to play this well though. They're just going to send out the swarm. Lincoln's popped. Now there is that darkness coming out. Bulba wants to keep fighting. They bring in Ferev, still holding the Ravage for now. The Roshan gets low. It will be picked up oh. by the Dire, and Bulba gets the Aegis. Huge play there by the Night Stalker. Now Mason gobbles up the time lapse, will still end up going down. Ravage comes in. Ajit BKB gonna be wearing thin. It's just Bulba versus the world. The Aegis does get popped in the back lines. Oh, Dubu with that stolen Requiem, able to do so much damage. And now Ferev may end up getting picked here. For now, they are going to lose the Bloodseeker, trading for the Weaver, but that Roche pick is huge. Abed comes in, trying to even this out, but oh, that's unfortunate. She dumps the Sonic Wave and can't blink out, so does end up a little bit bloodier for DC there. Still a great way to check Fnatic's momentum, though. 
He got the Roshan last hit and he got the Aegis. That's that huge. Was, that was unbelievable. I think they also got cheese baited as well at the very end. Because that was the second Roshan, which means cheese. So I guess they didn't get the Aegis, but they got the cheese. I didn't see 100% who picked it up, but I think it was Ajit. But either way, that that looked like it could have been the time for DC to turn it, but losing the cores like this, Abed's going to be forced to buy back. They, they still have Glyph, though, see if they can hold this off. Yep, Bulba up in 10 more seconds. It is nighttime now. Ohio taking some damage, still has that borrowed time. Ajit just sitting there and sieging. They've got to stop him. They've got to keep him checked, but the silence on the co-op is going to be huge. Borrowed time comes in. Ohio trying to soak up as much health as possible, but not in a great situation here. It looks like Ohio could end up going down. They do blast apart the Abaddon, and they're chasing for more. Abed focusing down on Ajit. They get the lift onto him. Febby with that blade mail trying to defend his cores. Ajit's going to be BKB'd up, but still running low on health, running low on mana. Nice cogs by Febby. At least distracting the dire course for now. Another hook shot back in. They do end up breaking the link into the co-op. Can they turn this around? With QO coming back in, leaving that double man silence. It's gonna be huge. And the raise from the low ground takes out the co-op. And now it's a silenced up weaver. Oh man. It's a bloody fight. But getting that co-op down again along with the weaver, that's potentially game winning. That co-op already bought back. That was insanely big. Then neither of them can buy back. It was a dieback for Abed. I think Mason. Did he spend his money or something, or did he just never have enough to buy back? I mean, he might not have had the money uh, in the first place, but like you mentioned, insanely good. Yeah, Weaver 300 gold short of that buyback. A little bit rough for him. I mean, he had the BKB, he had the Lincolns going. It just seemed like Fnatic, they had really clear targets in that fight. Uh, great use of the Clockwork, Hookshot, and Cogs to keep everyone distracted off of that Shadow Fiend and bought him enough time to at least go down fighting. Got that raise on the high ground, clipped the Quap, able to get off one last Requiem, so very well played there from the clock. The cores on the side of Fnatic are just... They've been ahead pretty much the whole game just due to the laning phase, and credit to Fnatic because it's not like DC are playing this poorly. They've actually done a very good job at splitting up the map and kind of stopping from Fnatic from getting that death ball going, and they still have not lost racks which is the most important thing. So sure, your cores died, Abed died back, but the fact of the matter is you can still play your game. It's only a 6k net worth lead for Fnatic right now. So it's one or two bad team fights away from DC being back in the position they were earlier, where they're able to push out all the lanes and then Fnatic are just running around like chickens with their head cut off trying to stop them. <laughs> yeah, definitely not going to be a quick game back in this for DC. They've got to take a couple more fights like that. But as long as their racks are up, I mean, it's just infinitely easier. The lanes are still going to keep pushing out in their favor. They've got Mason now getting close to his uh, Dragon Lance, so going to be bringing a little more damage out of him. Is this the build you want the Weaver to be going, or do you want just more raw right-click power out of him? I think he wants Pike just because of Clockwork. I think he's just building literally every item to stay alive, because even though he has Lincolns and BKB, he's still dying in fights. Forev almost gets clipped there. Dupu waiting on the high ground. This Rubik, he's uh, he's had some trouble staying alive here with his six deaths, just, I guess, eating up a lot of the initiation for his team, and now it looks like these racks are in some trouble. Uh, again, Queen of Pain cannot go down here. Still, buyback on cooldown. They're going to go in. They will find the Abaddon, but he heals back up to full health. The stolen Requiem from the Rubik already committed. And now Ohio just going to be taking up damage. There's the Ravage, though, connecting onto four. A hook shot back in from Febby, locking down Mason and the Cogs. But Mason's going to beat KB, walk right on out of there. Ajit going to be going down swinging. The Rubik gets low. QO able to finish him off. QO still alive, but being chased by two. They're in trouble. They get the dust on Mason. Oh man, this Weaver is in some serious trouble. Meanwhile, Febby just gonna be going. Another great use of Cogs to lock everyone down. Queen of Pain able to blink away. Huo is gonna be going down, but looks like they will trade for Ferev, so two for two, but the Bloodseeker going down means Fnatic are gonna have a bit of a tough time pushing out and getting anything out of this. They just chased QO around for so long, that fight. Like, Sam used the, the new a hunter in the night active to like follow him through trees. He had bugs on him. There was just non-stop tunnel vision on that poor Bloodseeker during that fight. I mean, <laughs> that was a 10 second BKB charge as well. You would imagine with the amount of farm that he has at this point, that they would have been able to win that a little bit more handedly. But I guess at the same time, they did get ravaged. I think it was like three or four heroes that got hit. So nice uh, initiation there from Forev managed to, again, they, they, they hold a little bit. I guess they did lose the melee racks at the end of the day, but they don't end up just, you know, taking it. They get something in return as well. Yeah, I mean, Queen of Pain stayed alive. The Weaver still up and fighting at the end of that fight. It wasn't like it was just totally over. And I mean, for only losing half a Rax, it's 35 minutes in and Fnatic's just been going at this push strat since minute one. DC have done a great job holding this off, but I mean, how much longer? Fnatic, they still got, I think, 
five good minutes of pressure before the net worth starts swinging for DC? It might be the next Roche, honestly, that decides it. I think that that's going to be the make or break for either team, because another Cheese and another Aegis could just mean another full set of racks for Fnatic. If and you know, DC don't have buybacks on one of their cores and they end up taking a bad engagement, if you don't contest Roshan and Fnatic hit it, yeah, it could be the end. But Mason's still kind of lacking in the damage department. That's the biggest concern for DC at the moment. Well, we're going in. Looks like they want to make a go of this Abaddon again. Stupid difficult hero to kill, even if he's on his own, just because he's got two lives and now that Lotus Orb making things difficult. He's, uh, I think, Shadow Strike the Queen of Pain a couple of times with it, but so far, nothing super major. Fnatic, I mean, they're still sticking together, but like we saw, as soon as Fnatic show on one side of the map, there's the other side of the map being pushed in. The creep equilibrium is so good for DC constantly. And this is the game plan for DC, always has been. You just force the enemy team to split up through pushing, and then you eventually find a pickoff, and that pickoff results in triple damage. That's just their lineup 101, basically. And rotation back down, Clockwork not going to land that hook shot onto the Rubik. Rubik, though, uh, well, he manages to get himself out of this, and now there's battle lines drawn. It seems like DC, they want to go take over this corner of the map. Nice uh, ward here, spotting any rotations forward, and... I mean, DC, they're, they're definitely holding their own. They're not confined to their base. They're not starving. They're still getting farmed, still pushing out the wave. And uh, yeah, Abed is going in, got some uh, Sheba's guard action going on. Is that the item you would have picked for Quap here? It's really nice because it synergizes with the lockdown of Ravage, your other AoE damage spells. And a lot of the heroes on Fnatic are melee, so they're going to be clumped up a lot of the time. It's it's just a really nice thing, especially too when the damage that you have to worry about in the fights is... I guess for now it's kind of a mixed damage, but right clicks later on are going to be a bit scary from Shadow Fiend and uh, Qo especially. Yeah, Qo. I mean he's scaling up really nicely. He had a good timing on that Radiance, it looks like he does have himself a, a 4 staff queued up. How does Bloodseeker keep himself real relevant into this late game? Because it's, uh, it's getting to the point where, you know, just a solo uh, rupture isn't going to be spooking anyone real bad. That's a very good question. Uh, I don't have a <laughs> tremendous amount of experience with Bloodseeker, but Hugo has managed to make it work, so I guess we can uh, learn to see how he does it. We'll see. Now, DC, they're in a, a holy position here. Forev trying to soak up all the mana while he can. He does have that Blink Ravage. We'll see if he's going to be able to get it off. Ohio, can use up the Borrow of Time, and now Mason just starting to lay, lay in, but... Still lacking a little bit of damage. You talked about the Weaver going for any and all items that help him live. It does mean he's still not quite that tremendous damage dealer that we know and love as a late game Weaver. Just the casual lands, it seems like. Oh, oh. shot comes in. Yep. Uh, they'll find the Rubik here, Dubu. I mean, he'll, he'll take one for the team. If he can stop a base push just by using his own body, that's that's an A+. plus. does have 5 ac and looks like Fnatic, they want to keep going. They haven't burned too many ults. Uh, the borrowed time going to be back up in three seconds, so Ohio can just keep frontlining the siege. This is a really good spot for Fnatic because, again, you look at the other side of the map, no heroes from DC. Abed's not there, Mason's not there. They cannot afford to run across the map that fast. And Ohio eating up as much damage as possible. It's time for his teammates to come in, and well, for now it seems like they can't quite find the initiation. They need DJ to go roll in and get that silence going. Hookshot to start things off. They are going to try to burn some of Fareb's mana. He's still got enough for the Blink Ravage, but holding on to that threat and Fnatic I mean they're their siege engines running out of gas they just keep going in slow but sure chip damage onto this tier three and we'll eventually get it Ajit gonna be walking back in time and will not lose his life so Fnatic they go in it takes them a little bit longer than they were hoping for but they do still get a tower and take no losses I think it's okay that it takes a while because again it's it's about other heroes being able to split push lanes for DC and since they were trapped in their base, that's the worst for them. They do not want to have the Weaver and the Queen both stuck in base at the same time. Because then you're not getting an advantage anywhere else. You're simply taking damage on your tower, and you're not able to fight either. So then you have to let them disengage. The only reason Fnatic went back is because they want Roshan. And dear god, there's a double damage. Roshan's double gonna damage. be spawning. <laughs> oh my god, this is actually so bad. And QO just lets it spawn right under his nose. Not taking the double damage yet. Just, uh doing this on his own devices and it's going to be melting really quickly there is a ton of right click damage coming out of fanatic they've got that negative armor as well from the solar crest but i mean dc they're keen on this and they may have to take a fight they still have that ravage they held on to it but yeah ajit just easily gets the aegis 
There's going to be Kyo holding on to that cheese, and they're ready to go. Just pile driving up mid. We'll see who's going to be the uh, unlikely first victim. You see, they've got a hold here, but this time the fight's a little bit different. You've got Dubu pushing out top lane. Down bottom, Abed able to go and at least keep the Creeper Libium great here, but probably going to cost him a good chunk of racks. How quickly are DC going to TP back? Well, they won't need creeps in bottom because mid will open the back door protection up. About that. Mm -hmm. This is going to be make or break here for DC. Yeah, Mason starting to lay in the damage. Did go pick up that Maelstrom, so at least uh, making his right clicks a little more spooky for Rev. Again, still holding the Ravage. He's been holding that forever, and now there's going to be a nice hook shot in. There's the Ravage spilled out, but the BKBs are already rolling. Ajit, oh, he's getting so much health from that Satanic. They do get the silence off on the Quap. She's stuck in the tree line, goes down immediate buyback, but Kyo is still hunting. Runs in deep into the Night Stalker. Febby able to zone back the Tidehunter. Debbie just sponging up damage with his body. It's all he can do as the racks are torn to shreds. They will find the Night Stalker kill as well. Night Stalker and Rubik both dead for good. Buyback's not coming out for them. And now it's just up to, uh, up to these three heroes to hold everyone back. There will be a little blood right. Silencing up for Rev. And they do get another hook shot on him. He's tanky, but is it going to be enough? Nice Sonic Wave from the Quap, but she's stunned in place. This could be it. This kill is going to be huge if they can find it. She's just going to be trying to blink back to her fountain for all she's worth. And even with a negative urn, she will still live a hook shot into the fountain. Bebby, please relax, but it will mean that Kibo is able to get the kill onto the Queen of Pain. There's a gem on the deck. Quap dead for 90 seconds, and the GG is called out as Fnatic's cores are still up and fighting. So well played, DC. But in the end, Fnatic get the better of them. Their push strat finally works out 42 minutes in the shadow thing was just way too huge during the last engagement like they dumped every single spell including ravage on them and they couldn't even take the ages because the, the satanic that he bought right before they started the push he pkb satanic hits like two or three times and he's at full hp again and then dc had absolutely nothing left in the tank i think that in a way maybe mason bought too many defensive items like maybe he didn't need the lance maybe he could have gone for the maelstrom before that and like pushed out lanes a bit more and there were also a couple of times where dc like preemptively teleported back assuming a fight was going to happen that Fnatic either baited